Hi everybody, Peter of England. The world is changing. That's the good news. The world is changing. That's the bad news. So what I'd like to do today is address a solution or a pair of solutions that I've put together as promised to all those people who attended the webinar on the 23rd of February, which is on the subject of escaping the trap, reclaiming your estate, and what's called expressing the trust. Now, those people, I did promise that I would have this document ready as soon as possible. It's taken a few days uh, longer than expected, but the results are, are better, and the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in these documents. They're available from the uh, removement.net shop. I will put the link in below. And so for all those people out there who are fed up of the tyranny that is placed upon them on a daily basis by state, government, government agencies, fictitious corporations, bailiffs, law firms, repossession organizations, you name it, the cop at the side of the road giving you a ticket, the, um, the, uh, the camera that picked your car up going into a, an exclusion zone or an inner zone of London or any city and generating uh, a fine that you have to pay, which goes from 60 to 150 to 350 by the time the bailiffs are ripping you out of your home, then for all those individuals who've had enough of that, then what I'd like to show you is this document here called Sacrament. So there's I'll deal with this first, and then we'll go on to this one. This one is for really the creditors, but this stuff here is the ground stuff, the, the base that on which this sits. So you really need to understand what's covered in sacrament before you go on, on to this. Um, it stands for Sworn Affidavit Creating Reborn Men's Trust. So the basis of it is trusts not creditor, debtor, but trustee beneficiary. And the idea is to express the trust, create the controversy, and then handle it, yeah? This allows you to align quite fully with your straw man identity, to use all the pieces of paper that are already prepared and waiting like traps or uh, landmines for you out there to tread on, and use them to your advantage by simply giving executive orders, signing the documents, and expressing your intention. Okay, so the, the body of the, of the document begins like this. I've tried to deliberately uh, include a type of, should we say, quasi-religious theme to it because it's very appropriate because everything everybody's doing some, uh, uh, sorry, everything that everyone's doing at the moment, it seems to me, and have been doing for a long, long time, has paid little dividend when it comes to representing themselves in a courtroom or battling with creditors. So you've got to begin eventually to ask yourself, those methods are unworkable, they don't work, the proof of the pudding is out there. So whether it's people involved in the sovereignty system, whether people are claiming uh, free man identity, whether you're in Germany now and wanting to join the, the what's called the Reichsberger movement, who are being uh, termed domestic terrorists, all these type of people are looking to express a desire to move away from the state. And this is what sacrament shows you how to do. In effect, it's a divorce announcement. It's a divorce announcement handed to the statutory or state authorities and agencies, basically telling them enough's enough and you are separating and going your, your own way. Um, the basis of it is what's called a reclamation of soul identity. The Vatican, the priesthood, the organizations that in effect empower those organizations, um, unbeknownst to you or whether you appreciate it or not, have, have taken possession of your 
your, uh, your soul identity, your body. They tell you what to do. They take your children away from you if, if you do something that they object to. They can uh, force you to have vaccinations. They can force you uh, into a particular type of uh, treatment protocol. They can mentally assess you uh, to see whether you're psychi psychiatrically fit just to stand in a court and object to a, a road traffic fine. They can do virtually anything they want. So for all those people out there who are looking for an answer, looking for a way to escape the trap, then I would suggest you could do a lot worse than consult these documents. And the reason I'm going to uh, say that or prove that is, is coming now. Uh, one of the things we cover in the document here is what's called rebutting the 12 presumptions of a pagan Roman curia or court. There is a series of presumptions running in the court um, which are hidden presumptions. And if you enter into the court, um, having followed our directives here or my directives here, then you're immediately in contempt in that court. Um, because a living man has no opportunity to fit himself into their courts. That's why if you go in, you're always represented, represented as a, a straw man persona. And this is why you need a, an attorney or a lawyer to, to answer for you. And in effect, what's set up there is a sacrament uh, of confession where the judge is administering the, the, the sacrament and he's actually sitting there um, listening to a confession given on your behalf by the prosecuting attorney or the plaintiff's lawyer. Right. The other thing we deal with in here is something called the settlement certificate. And if you've never heard of what a settlement certificate is, that morphed into something called a birth certificate. And birth certificates and settlement certificates were typically um, a, an issuance of the local parish, therefore the ecclesiastical authorities in an area to give a pauper or a ward of court uh, the entitlement to stay in a particular area. So settlement certificate became the birth certificate and that's something we help uh, you with because it's all part of the progression here taking us down into the, the Lazarus taxon. Um, I also deal with um, the issue of um, the informant on the birth certificate, the parent or par rental that uh, maybe you're, you could, when you've consulted the document, you'll understand that a bit better, why they actually gave you away in exchange for the certificate. I then cover the papal bulls uh, and the, the infamous Sestri Key V Act 1666, section one and section four, considering the reclamation of your estate. Um, I show you how to make a living will, which satisfies three very important things that the courts don't admit that you, you have when you make an appearance in court. That is um, that you are over the age of majority, that you are alive and that you are sound of mind we can make sure that those three conditions are satisfied before you go in. Um, also, we'll cover um, something called um, generally, uh, um, generally accepted accounting principles. These are what's called GAAP, G-A-A-P, and these are the principles that are used for all finance, all mortgaging, and also then I cover what's called the five fraudulent facts of finance revolving around your mortgage. So this is background information that is going to bring us down to here in a moment. So what I also have got in here, um, and it's on, on, the, on the shop, so if you're purchasing this document, don't bother with what's called Skyhook, which is an emergency evacuation procedure. That's included complementary into this document here, and that is the emergency procedure that you can use so that you don't consent, you don't accept the proceedings in a court if by some strange uh, reason, following this information, you would end up in a court. Post this, you don't need to be in a court ever again. Um, I also deal uh, with 31 CFR, I think it's 363.6, which is the emancipation of a minor uh, to access your um, custodian's account. You've got to reclaim what's called a minor's account. So that's what's called a TDA, 
treasury deposit account and sacrament shows you the the definition there in 31 CFR which states quite clearly that a minor is someone who has not obtained the age of 18 but also a minor is someone who has obtained the age of 18 but has not yet reclaimed his estate or account that's very important because until you do that you've got a problem and that's why you are hounded by bailiffs you're hounded by recovery agents you're hounded by taxation authorities by local councils for example in the uk with council tax and um, taking people's ho homes away from them, why the remorseless onslaught of the mortgage companies and the banks and credit lending agencies just always seem to win they're privateer corporations that are looking at you as a trustee a rogue trustee a trustee that's gone bad by not paying them so what you need to do is to learn how to express the trust in your favor so i think i've said enough about sacrament what i'm going to do now is cover this one lazarus taxon a taxon is um, a, a phenomena within a fossil record, a fossil record, yeah, uh, whereby something that seemed to be extinct then suddenly reappears back in, in time. So the nature, therefore, of Lazarus, as most of you um, would know if you've ever read a Bible, um, Lazarus was the, um, the brother of Mary Magdalene, and Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, him having been dead uh, for um, several days. And uh, so it wasn't just a, a case of his heart having stopped momentarily. It was a true miracle. And this is really what I'm suggesting now. You've got to start getting a grip of how you handle yourself within society because the buck stops at the choke point. The choke point in the entire system is the judge in the court yeah so you've got government here in all its 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 glory coming down to a judge here sitting at a pivotal pivotal choke point and then expanding into the private privateer world of the corrupt criminal fascist establishment which is the corporatocracy who've been given license because they're all lackeys and in the pockets of government ministers and ministers in their own, uh, in the pockets of these, these companies, that they're all agreeing to cut the cake up however they can, and you're doing all the work and getting nothing. So the, the, the Lazarus taxon is, uh, it's in a PDF and it's in a Word document, as is this, gives you the opportunity to take what you want from it. Um, the paperwork within, within here is complete to the effect that we've got uh, an example, a running example of the letter you need to send to your creditors, to all creditors. Yeah. So this one document, you can then take the letter template out, put your particulars in, um, maybe change it to, to uh, your own flavor or color it as you see fit, and then we can you can send it to your creditors. In effect, what you're doing here is you're foreclosing on your creditor. So it doesn't matter who the creditor is, it doesn't matter what state of affairs you are in with your, um, your current uh, uh, payments, whether it's on a house, whether it's on a car, a plane, a mortgage, a credit card, uh, it doesn't matter. Foreclose on the creditor by expressing the trust. That's the key, because what we're doing now is showing you the door that is there, but many of you don't see because you walk past it because it's, it's seemingly hidden from you, and you just never thought or never assumed that by opening it, it would have anything in. It's almost like a for forbidden or ghost-type door. So this is where we're, we're looking to take you. Um, there is also a document in here uh, which says what's going on in court, what's really going on in court. It explains the position of the administrative trustee, the roles that the judges play, the roles that the um, plaintiff and defendant attorney lawyers play, and it gives you a, a precise series of instructions 
um, for either reading out in court if you so wish or delivering to the clerk of the court um, in order for you to um, commence your, your express, uh, expressing of the trust. So really this is what happens here. You don't fight the, the creditors anymore. Um, you simply make an announcement to them by, by paperwork that this is the scenario, this is the situation, and from here on we, we go to court. Their legal department will handle it. The legal department then will have to decide, having taken consultation, whether they take it to the court. But if they do, that is the best, believe me, that is the best result that you can expect uh, or hope for because you can express the trust. All you have to do is to show intent, purpose, and property, and that's enough. And the law will naturally assume that there is a trust if it sees a trust. Um, the front of the document that I'm talking about here, I forgot to hold it up, um, called the Lazarus Taxon. Um, I am the unknown beneficiary. Um, it's targeted to what I call the pretender lender. Um, and if we look at the various headings that we'll cover here, um, the main one is make a prima facie case in the court. Uh, you come in with your documentation, you make a statement, it causes controversy, and it has to be progressed from there. So what I've done is I've tried to take everything that is out there um, uh, that is fairly, to be quite honest, complex, coded, uh, and very, very difficult to wade through and taken the view that it can be made simple. What this is doing for you, the Lazarus Taxon here, is giving you enough momentum to start the, the ball rolling. It's a completely different way of handling the court because with the authority that the document gives you by your expression of it, it accelerates you into what's called a superior court, it takes you away from admiralty, it puts you into what's called the chancery division where equity, not Joe Biden's equity or Kamala Harris's equity, but the equity of fairness in law prevails. The moment that you say that you've come back from the dead because proof of life is all there is, once you come back and express the fact that you are the unknown beneficiary, that you're back from the dead, that you want to reclaim your estate, that's when the fun and games begins. Because what I'm saying to you is either true or it's not. It can't be partial. And I assure you that the work that everybody's done out there, um, the people who've gone before and the people who are the hidden gatekeepers, full well know that it is the operation of titles and trusts which makes the world of commerce go round. Um, again, what we're helping you do is uh, notify the creditors and notify the, the government, which is uh, with corporate fascism or corporate communism uh, that's come together so you can hardly uh, delineate now the intricacies and the profiting of the ministerial and political class from those of the, 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 the magnets within business. Um, you can't differentiate it now. So it's merged. And so the battle is, as I say, it's at that choke point because the judge and this is the, uh, the, the crux here. The judge is the one who is liable sitting on that point. If you can change his mind by ever so much, if he's in doubt, yeah, he's got to do two things. He's either got to discharge the case against you or he's got to continue the fight. And he won't, I suggest, want to continue the fight if you've just got a reasonable amount of background information especially if you submitted it in your paperwork. So as I reiterate, you don't have to be clever. You don't have to be a fast talker. You don't have to know trust law. You don't have to uh, look at the 150 odd pages of the universal trust code. Uh, you can just do it with a bit of paperwork to get you going. 
Now, in addition, what I'm encouraging everybody out there to do is also to look at this as a business opportunity, yeah? Everybody's struggling for money, everybody's struggling for something now to do as the world economies collapse. A big question is, hopefully, we still have time. Do we have time? I don't know. But that being said, budgetary considerations are being looked at generally. I would say these documents are a very well worth investment because you can then set yourself up as a hub or a hub leader. Um, bring your friends in, bring your family, bring your acquaintances, bring your work pals in around you and explain what, you've, what you're doing or what you are thinking of doing. Then you can share that documentation with them and you can proceed together. Because what this is, is a, almost like um, bringing water to the boil. Yeah, small little bubbles start to appear and then we want to get it to a place where the judiciary or the establishment can't just handle the onslaught. That's where we want to take you or I want to take you. And I've always been practical in the type of spiritual or um, uh, guidance and assistance that I dole out or hand out. It's practical. It's not just another book. It's not me standing up um, giving another seminar on theory or theoretical ways to get to the moon. Um, this is practical, hands-on, on-the-ground stuff, which is 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 going to work for you. Um, so to conclude, create the controversy, agree with the the plaintiff in effect, this is what you're doing, and then use the three chambers of the estate, initial estate, which is what's called the certificate of live birth estate, then the birth certificate or settlement certificate, and then what's called a pass-through trust. We, you, we take control of those and by a simple um, attitude of giving executive orders, giving administrative orders, then you bring those documents into the fore. Controversy is created. All the paperwork that you will ever need is already sitting on the judge's and the clerk's desk or been provided by the plaintiff who's brought a case against you. Maybe it doesn't even get that far because don't forget, the moment that a case is brought or filed, the, um, the informant, the, um, the bank, credit card, or repossession agency, or creditor, as you might call them, the moment they do that, they've created a case for filing in the court. Guess what that piece of paper is? It's a trust. It's a piece of property that's been moved with intent and purpose of beneficiary, trustee, creditor, debtor payment. So that's where you really need to go. Uh, you've got to get joined with the system. At the moment, as you can see, nothing works for you. Um, a, a final point, and this is just uh, to say how, how important this is. Um, there is even a method there for people who are either in bankruptcy or considering bankruptcy, or even not considering bankruptcy. Because the first thing you need to do once you go into bankruptcy is you have to state what your assets are. And you have to do that to what's called an insolvency practitioner, or it's sometimes called a, a, a trustee in bankruptcy. Whether you're in the United States or whether you are in the, the UK or Commonwealth countries, the systems are very much the same. There's explicit um, details in, in here to cover that. And why I suggest it is because there are ways of protecting your house uh, if you are uh, if you're joint tenants, and you have children, there is no way that the house can be put on the market. That's not the case if you don't declare bankruptcy and the mortgage company tries to repossess on you. They can kick you out. Even if you're on your own, you can delay for a year and in some cases up to three years because they have to get a special order to evict you if you've declared bankruptcy. Now, the reason usually the house is a, a bit of a, a, an anomaly here is because it's called it's sec, it's a, what's called a secured property. The the loan that the bank 
loaned you supposedly is secured against the property that's why they usually want the property back but there is a way of delaying it and that is something for consideration so um, I think that's about it I've covered most of the the information uh, I'll I'll be very happy to answer any questions in the comments down below um, and so please don't forget get organized if you want to work with uh, other people around you, whether it's in your family or whether it's uh, in uh, uh, colleagues at work or friends, get them in and you start learning this so that you can start teaching them. It's a good way of becoming proficient quickly and all of you can help each other together. And hey, you can even dip into um, the, uh, the local uh, the local legal um, representatives and ask them what they think of some of the things. But generally, they're juiced in to the extent it's impractical. So maybe I should have just kept my mouth shut there. But anyway, so thank you for watching. Uh, share the video, pass it on to whoever you want. And uh, Peter of England saying thank you.